Hey, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, I'm doing an unboxing of Save South Vietnam. This is from Fortress Games, and it is a solitaire game of the South Vietnamese and U.S. war against the Viet Cong in North Vietnam, 1965 to whenever. Anyway, this is, as it says, a solitaire game. This is from Fortress Games. I've just uh, recently learned about them. They actually have a few other games that I'm interested in taking a look at. A couple in uh, World War II, the 8th Air Force, and the 20th Air Force. They've apparently been around a while. They're just now uh, upgrading, or not upgrading, but uh, reprinting their games in this uh, in a newer um, updated format. And so this is the first one we're going to take a look at. It's again, Save South Vietnam. It's not a big box. It's very thin, but it seems, feels very sturdy. I'm very impressed on the on the heft of this one here, but let's just uh, go ahead and dig in and see what all you get. All right, quote here on the front from Lyndon B. Johnson: "Boys, it's just like the Alamo. By God, somebody should have helped those Texans. I'm going to Vietnam." Starting out with a game manual. It's got a nice, uh, it's glossy stock, but it's got a nice uh, cardstock cover, which you don't see a lot of anymore. Uh, so it's got like a real cover and then, you know, a paper inside. So it's like a book. So that's pretty cool. And it clocks in here. Since you don't really count the cover as a page count, it comes in about 24 pages. So let's take a look through that. All right, on May 10th, 1965, let's zoom in here. Two Viet Cong regiments surprisingly overran the provincial capital of Long Binh Province, Song Bay. The Battle of Song Bay was the culmination of the collapse of South Vietnamese regular army, known as the Army of the Republic of Vietnam, or ARVN. It was the first time a South Vietnamese provincial capital had fallen and then, had, and then been held even briefly by Viet Cong forces in the Long Running War. To General Westmoreland, commander of the Military Assistance Command, Vietnam, MACV, the battle could not have been more ominous. Dun, dun, dun. All right. Let's dig through here. Better contents here. So the game board counters, game setup, regular turn, and then basically just going through everything. It's kind of large print. Still a lot of white space. It's not too large, not too too small. Obviously, it does have you know it's full color, so it's got some full color uh, examples here. So we start off looking at the components here, the game board, uh, describing that, how it's set up, and then our counters, the makeup of the counters, and then just you know again just flowing through the rules. So I'm, I'm seeing there's not, it's not quite as, I mean, there are, there are sections here. We do have sections that are in blue and in red, where we're going to get indication of what that means. For, for, like if that's changes, ah, important instructions are in red, examples are in blue. So there are a lot of examples, there's not a lot of graphics to go with the examples, at least here on these first few pages. So for example, important rule, if the political points track is at negative 10, check whether the province has fallen. And then here's an example of how you would check that. So we'll see more when we get to the board. All right, but yeah, definitely a lot of text. It is laid out uh, in a pretty clear uh, outline format. So in section six, we've got movement, seven is combat, and then subsections A, I, using proper outlining nomenclature it's very very crisp the the graphics the print so will definitely be easy to read whether the writing is easy to read is another it's another matter i'm not saying it's not i'm just saying so you get to page 15 here and we get to optional some optional rules so victory is on page 14. You win if Saigon does not fall to the Reds. If the Saigon Fishhook province ever becomes fallen, the game ends immediately and you lose. If turn 50 ends and it has not fallen, you win. So 
you will play this over 50 turns. So we have optional, optional rules on page 15. And then it's very slick. It wants to slide every time I turn the pages. And then we have short scenarios. So you can play Send in the Marines. The three scenarios give you the opportunity to choose a brief but critical period of the war to sample your skills. Also, their victory conditions each emphasize something unique. So you can focus on different aspects of the war as well as different time periods. So you don't have to play the whole 50 turns. You can play these short scenarios. So and then this is the setup information for each of those. And then we got the designer notes. Do, 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 do. It's interesting here. So we got the designer notes and then some historical myth busting here. Myth, the U.S. was defeated in a jungle guerrilla war by the Viet Cong. False. Aside from South Vietnam, probably no participant in the Second Indochina War was as thoroughly defeated as the Viet Cong. Although frustratingly difficult to find and bring to a fight, the Viet Cong were eventually done in by high-tech attrition from U.S. forces coupled with errors on their own part, on the part of their own leadership, and periodically exposing their fragile forces to utter destruction. Destruction. Very interesting. And then we have some more optional rules. The calendar-based cheat sheet. Uh, blue is optional one rule, U.S. units, green is optional two rule, Arvin units, which we saw in those optional rule sections. So here's where you bring them in based on the calendar. And that is it for the rule book. And then we've got an initial setup on the back. Page four, see page four, game setup. And got A, B, C, D, this is your visual example for the setup. All right, digging in more here. There's actually a lot in this box, it seems like. This is, our, this is our map. It's a card stock, large card stock map. We'll open that in a minute. Take a look. Here we go. These counters are laser cut, which leaves a sooty residue along the cut lines. This residue is best cleaned using a moist, not wet rag, and will take about 30 minutes for the entire set. Rags are better than paper towels, but paper towels can be used too. It's very similar to the old Victory Point games. Uh, used to have the laser cut counters, which were actually really uh, were awesome. They were wooden and laser cut. These are in a bag, we won't know yet. Uh, but the soot never really played much of a factor, at least in my experience with many Victory Point games, so I'm not sure it'll be a factor in these. But we'll take a look in a second. So first we have our, our dice. We have a green and a red. And green wins five to four. The counters themselves in a plastic bag. The nice thing that means it's probably going to be thick, thicker counters than we're used to in most war games. So we'll pull these out. All right, so these are the counters. Interesting is that they flip this way. So we'll punch one out here, hopefully. And there's a little bit. You know, the darker edge because the laser cut them and we're going to rub our finger on it and yeah on this one we do get a little bit but it's not that big a deal it'll come off and they always smell really good too but anyway what i was going to say is what's really interesting is they flip this way top to top to bottom instead of this way which i know it's a minor thing but i actually like that because when you're playing on the board and you want to flip them the instinct is to flip this way so that's cool. So anyway, this is our first sheet of counters, half sheet. We've got some police counters and then some unit counters for the Viet Cong. And then the other side, it would appear that they are the same, on the, at least the sheet, they're the same on both sides, plus one and two. And then that's that counter here with the plus one and two. So they're just double-sided. The sheet of counters, some infantry units, some anti aircraft, turn markers, fallen markers, city markers. I might flip this way to see the other side. I don't know if these are wounds or health. Defensive marker. Yeah, I like I like that they're uh, I like that they're uh, 
they are card cardboard still or chipboard like regular counters but they're they are laser cut which is cool this gives a nice square edge you don't need to use an organ lamination is 2.5 millimeter deluxe corner rounder for these although you probably could if you want that nice round look but it would not be necessary because you're not going to have any loose ends or you know, stray ends on there so we got some helicopters and some planes you see the american forces got airborne Some, looks like some officers and again it appears they're the same on both sides not a lot of difference or any difference that I can see yet with the counters so there's two and a half sheets of counters and then we've got our reference card I'm gonna pop that out static out there that's on a that's on a sheet of glossy coated cardstock. And the, this one is pre rounded, which is cool. So, this has our political cadres received, placement table, NVA regiments received, placement table, um, order of combat losses, fallen check, special forces sortie. This is your reference chart. And now let's go take a look at that, that map. All right, so this is the map. It is an eight panel. Uh, again, it's a coated cardstock map. It's not a uh, paper map and it's not a mounted map. So it is a lot thicker and a lot more durable than a paper map would be. Um, but of course, you're still gonna have the issues with laying flat and probably needing to put plexi down. Although if you don't like the, the, uh, the complications that plexi brings, uh, being being a little stiffer you can still probably weight it down with something and get it to behave it's only the good thing is it's only you know uh, it's only eight panels so it's not a lot of you know the paper mat may flex a lot more with with being weighted down I think holding this down would still be able to play pretty well but if you have a big sheet of plexi it'll work it's so eight and a half by eleven maybe a little bigger than eight and a half um, so that would make it a 22 by 34 inch map. So you got some charts built onto, onto the map for easy reference. And you got these political point tracks in these various regions. And then you've got the actual terrain map with the areas defined. So we've got some red lines here, got some yellow lines subsections larger sections um, obviously that's all going to be explained in the rules just anyone want to see so here's your calendar tracking everything down the side your turn phases are there and again then you've got these the cities marked off and the political tracks surrounding them and a place to track the political points for each area and then base areas come on. And then over here you've got your US divisions and boxes for each of those. So that is that is the map. Give you a kind of a high overview here of it. And now let's recap everything you get in the box. So if you pick up a copy of Save South Vietnam from Fortress Games, you're gonna get that map we just took a look at, which is a snug fit in the box. You're gonna get the reference card, uncoated card stock, two and a half sheets of laser cut, maybe a little sooty, but how to clean them, counters. That 24 page instruction manual and rule book. Nice, nice full color. Like that artwork on the cover there, or photograph, classic photograph, and two dice, and that is everything in the box. So the solitaire single-player only game, Save South Vietnam, from Fortress Games. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye bye. Oh.